Call the roll, please. <laughs> yeah, just cover it Danielle off. McKenzie. Here. Here. Jason Blair. Here. Melissa Hunt. Here. Louis Williams. Here. Adam Webb. Here. Mark Ham. Here. Lynn Lewis. Here. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? We have the leadership more class here tonight, and I just want to say thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And if there's anything we can do for you at City Hall, just let us know. Anything you want to say? Yeah, Mayor, I, uh, I'm a member of the more leadership class of 2018, and it's been a very enjoyable experience. And uh, tonight, I guess, represents the last official uh, activity that we have, and so we're getting close to being ready to graduate. And uh, I would encourage uh, others to participate in this if they have a chance. So there is a test after the end of this meeting. Is that right? Could be. Okay. <laughs> All right, to graduate. Item number two is the consent docket. <laughs> Item A is approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held March 19, 2018. Item B is authorize payment of $24,003.78 to the Cleveland County Assessor for Visual Inspection Program. Item C, approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2017-2018 in the amount of $2,508,071.82. Mayor, I just have a quick question. Sure. Really no discussion, but could somebody just give me a little clarification about the visual uh, inspection program? No. The visual inspection program is what the uh, Cleveland County Assessor's Office does to make sure that uh, what's on the property is supposed to be on the property. The property hasn't been improved or things like that, so they can give a better assessed valuation. All right. Thank you. Move to approve. All second. right. Thank you. Thank you. Both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Lou Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number three is consider adoption of resolution number 897. Mayor, oh, uh, yes. Just on, on advice of our bond council and financial advisor, I would ask that we table item three and then address it in item 3.1. Okay. Make a motion we table item three. All right. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to table. Item three, would you call for the vote, please? Louis Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes. Item is tabled. Item number four is considered authorized. 3.1. Oh, okay. You guys are messing me up tonight. <laughs> All right. Item 3.1 in the addendum for the agenda for the regular meeting of the Moore City Council, April 2nd, 2018. Item 3.1 is considered adoption of resolution 89718 authorizing the calling and holding of an election in the city of Moore, Oklahoma for the purpose of submitting to the registered qualified electors of said city the question that issuance or general obligation bonds of said city in the amount not to exceed sum of $43,050,000 and to provide funds for the purpose of constructing, reconstructing, improving or repairing streets or bridges in the said city of the issuance of the general obligation bonds of said city in the amount not to exceed the sum of three million one hundred forty thousand dollars to provide funds for the purpose of constructing reconstructing improving or repairing certain drainage channels in said city of the issuance of general obligation bonds of said city in the amount not to exceed the sum of one million five hundred twenty five thousand dollars to provide funds for the purpose of construction and equipping quiet zones at certain railway, railroad crossings in said city of issuance and of general obligation bonds of said city in an amount not to exceed the sum of $600,000 to provide funds for the purpose of acquiring two mechanical street sweepers of issuance of the general bonds, excuse me, general obligation bonds of said city in an amount not to exceed the sum of $300,000 to provide funds for the purpose of acquiring and installing a new telephone system with all of said improvements to be owned exclusively by said city and leveling 
excuse me, and levying and collecting an annual tax in addition to other taxes upon the taxable property in the said city for the payment of interest and principal on said bonds. There's 300 and something words there and there's not a period in any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor and Council, the projects for this agenda item will address infrastructure issues in the city. As part of this, we understand that there is a des desire to have the city's millage rate impacted as little as possible. Currently, our rate is 15.5 mils. Our plan will not raise the city's millage rate above 16.5 mils. We will achieve this by issuing the bonds incrementally over the next seven years. Also during the next seven years, bonds totaling $26,975,000 will be paid off. If you recall, during the 2014 GEO bond issue, we represented to our citizens that we would not go above 18 mils. Per our city audit reports, our rate did not go above 15.5 mils. These bonds are scheduled to have maturities 10 years from the date of issuance. The proposition is drafted to have 20-year maturities. This will give us the flexibility, if needed, to adjust the term depending on interest rates. The council votes to authorize each bond issue, so you will have to approve any changes to the bonds to keep the millage rate stable. The new street and drainage channels will have a useful life between 25 and 50 years. Capital projects of this type, due to the expense, are typically funded through a GO bond. It is not practical to fund these on a pay-as-you-go basis. For example, our current annual sales tax revenue budget is $27 million. The average annual bond issues over the next seven years will be $7 million. In order to fund this through sales tax, the City of Moore would have to sustain 26% growth over each of the next seven years. I have checked with our congressional offices and there is no definitive federal funding at this point. Our street projects do include 10-foot sidewalks on one side of the street and trees. Drainage projects will rebuild worn out drainage channels that are over 50 years old and long past their useful life. These channels were not designed for the speed of the water that moves through them. Replacing these channels will address this maintenance issue that the, the water creates and also address the vegetation growth and erosion that, uh, that we incur each year. The street sweepers will help keep debris out of the stormwater drains. This is important because if the drains get backed up, there could be property flooding issues and DEQ issues from pollutants that could get into the streams from lack of maintenance. The phone system needs to be upgrade, upgraded. We have a problem with drop calls. In several of our buildings, we have older systems that the manufacturer no longer makes parts for. In the buildings that have newer equipment, the manufacturer has advised us that they will no longer support the system after 2018. The quiet zones speak for themselves. If approved, we will plan to have several town hall meetings to explain the projects. Our bond counsel, Terry Hawkins, is here, and our financial advisor, uh, Chris Gander, is here to help answer any questions. Okay. And, and these will be split up amongst four, four five. or five questions? Be five, there'll be five questions. The, uh, uh, the, street, uh, the underpass and the street projects, the drainage project, the quiet zone, the street sweepers, and the telephone system. So people will be able to vote on any or all of those issues? Yes. Right. Okay. Right. And just let people know at home, we are not doing this tonight, so don't panic. Just for clarification for our audience, can we specify the street projects and where those will be? Sure. It's page 59, I believe. The 4th Street underpass, resurfacing yeah. Northeast 12th Street between Eastern and I-35, widening and resurfacing, resurfacing Southwest uh, 34th Street between Telephone Road and Santa Fe, resurfacing Eastern in one phase between North 12th to South 4th Street, and then eastern from south 4th to south 19th. Thanks. And if I could clarify, we're not <coughs> deciding yes or no to pass these bonds, but we are deciding whether it will go on the ballot in June. Right. To yes, I just wanted to make right. sure to, that to was get, clear. To, to get everyone. it on the ballot, right. we have to do this tonight, basically, to right. get it in a timely manner. Yes, in order, just for further clarification, uh, in order to get this on the June 26th ballot, we have to have 75 days notice to the uh, Cleveland County, and so that's why it's on this particular agenda tonight, to meet that deadline. Uh, Brooks, Mayor, members of the Council, uh, my name is Terry Hawkins, we're bond council on the project. In response to Councilman Webb's question, uh, we, if the Council decides to go forward with this, we uh, are required to publish an election proclamation. It'll be published the three Thursdays preceding the election on June 26. And in there, it outlines the streets that will be improved. So, and also in response to the mayor's uh, having to read the long agenda, there's an old Supreme Court case that 
requires us to not bundle up you know, issues on one proposition. I'd love to have this as one proposition and just break down A, B, C, D, and E, but uh, the AG on occasion will strike down uh, elections if they try to bundle them up. And so uh, uh, after Chris and I were talking with, with uh, Brooks, we just felt like it was, it, was, it was the best route to take having five propositions since we had basically five distinct issues. So. Oh, I just argued there wasn't enough periods in there. <laughs> There's an art to just putting semicolons. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why you go to law school, right? <laughs> okay, do we have a motion on this item? No, I have some questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some folks that oh, okay. talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so there are five distinct different questions or propositions. However, the main one, I think that we can all agree that 43 and some change million dollars is the underpass and the streets. Is there a reason we didn't separate those two? Because those are that's one of the biggest questions I've received this week. We uh, we felt like that it was a it's Fourth Street, there you know right east of Broadway. It, I mean it is a street, and so we felt like it was part of the street program, and and we just felt like it fit fit in there with that. I mean that would have been a had to be a sixth proposition if we just separate them. It, it could have been done, but we just felt like it would. It, it was part of the street program, and so we felt like it would fit. Brooks, if you want to elaborate on your reasoning, but yeah, uh, we just we we, uh, we tried to group all the like projects, and since the Fourth Street project, uh, I mean, granted, it is the most expensive, but uh, uh, it does refurbish Fourth Street and, and build the underpass, and so uh, we just we just grouped them all together. I mean, but isn't it? It also touches the Eastern projects as well. I'm sorry. The other road projects that are in that group, will you will you repeat them? Oh sure. Uh, resurfacing Northeast 12th Street between Eastern and I-35, on Southwest 34th Street between Telephone and Santa Fe, widen and resurface that. Resurfacing Eastern between North 12th and South 4th, and then resurfacing Eastern between South 4th to South 19th. And for members of the council that were not weren't on the council in 2014, whenever we had the election in for the uh, overpass over 34th Street or over I-35, we actually had an either-or situation that night. If you all remember, we prepared election documents for one for the uh, bridge over I-35, the overpass, or in the alternative, the, the Fourth Street underpass at fourth, you know, at East Fourth and Broadway, and so. At that time, the council decided to go with, with the bridge over I-35, and so uh, we just felt like it fit, fit in with the street project. Is it an option to split those up if that were something that we found everyone wanted to do, the street projects alone? You, and you then kind of have to do it together. I mean, you, you can't really put in that underpass overpass on a bridge without doing the road work. But there's a lot of road work that doesn't right. affect 4th yeah. Street. It's the 19th and Santa Fe and the 34th Street resurfacing. And those projects don't seem to flow exactly with. I understand they're street projects and that we're redoing a street on 4th Street. But to me, they don't seem to flow directly with the 4th Street underpass. Would you rather? I, I don't have a problem out? with them being in, in with the railroad underpass. That's not. In, in a lot of a lot of geo bonds are done with school districts, so. A lot of times you're saying gymnasiums. You don't put every gymnasium out there for people to vote on. You generally do kind of. So this, what kind of the way they did this, structured it, it it's pretty common. But to the answer is you could do that, but it's not uncommon grouping the streets together. And a lot recently did a 50, very similar $50 million authorization. There were streets for all over town. And instead of, once again, I mean, where do you kind of stop separating them? So, I didn't want you to think that it was kind of like designed that way. It's just uh, that would be what you normally would group. I just want to be very, where it's very clear that we have five propositions, but 90% of the dollars are in one proposition. So yes, it's five different questions and five different votes, but we're really talking about 90% of every dollar, 43 million out of the 48 and some change is going to be in that one question. So it's not, I, I've just heard a lot of people worrying about the millage rate going up, and I know that we've promised to keep it down underneath that 18, but, um, it will increase some and I think that for citizens to have the option to pick and choose is I would like to have that option that's my thoughts on it I think the feedback we've gotten as council people that Daniel's referring to is there's people that want the underpass but they're not really interested in the repaving of streets and sidewalks and so, I would disagree with that I would say the number one call I get is streets and, and, and sidewalks right well I'm talking about the calls that we've yeah. actually received this week so the people were wanting to know 
is there a way to just vote for the underpass and then if we also want to devote for the repaving so i think that's what we're referring to so that, that's going to be a decision you guys make right. but I'll, i would again, like to kind of just hear you know there's a lot of people here tonight i'd like to hear feedback from them on kind sure. of what they want I, I might add a little color just to the the levy side i mean that that's what i you know that, that's kind of more my job so just kind of a quick history is uh, city of moore has used geo debt for a long over 30 years my history in my book here goes back 30 years and your levy's been as high as 25 mils your mills overall right now are about 130. so if you're talking 16 and a half mils versus 15 and a half i mean you're talking about a fraction of one percent change so while it sounds bigger you're paying 70 something mills to the school you have 30 mills of profits of the county you have your vote tech so this is just one piece of what goes on your tax bill but once again, you've been issuing debt for, you know, or had levies for at least 30 something years. It's been as high as 25 mils in 1992. And then in the recent past, uh, you passed $18 million in 2008 for streets. You passed 25 million, 100,000 in 2012 for parks. And then the most recent one that was just referenced was the $15 million in 2014 for the 34th street. And that was a target of 18 mils. And this is where it kind of gets more to the point I want to make here is, because your growth, unlike sales tax, where we know what the revenue stream is, or you know you're going to tax at like a half percent, here you authorize the debt and it drives what the tax rate is. So every year we recalibrate this. The county assessor goes out to everybody's house, all the buildings, assesses all that property, and then basically we take the debt service on all these bonds and divide it by that net assessed valuation. So that net assessed value, assess valuation continued to go up. That tornado has come through before, it's brought it down. And so instead of issuing a certain amount of bonds that we expected to, we, we dramatically reduced the number of bonds we expected to issue. So this isn't a absolute plan. Every year we recalibrate, relook, and if we, we expect based on all of our growth projections and the projected interest rates, once again, that's a known unknown, right? The interest rates could go down, interest rates could go up dramatically. And if some of these things happen, instead of doing this in five years, we might have to go six years. I mean, if, if you got in a horrible, some kind of recession, we're going to go out to seven or eight years. But that's all kind of a promise to voters, like, this is our goal. This is what we're going to try to keep it at. And this council and, and your professional service providers have done a very good job in not only uh, doing that, but keeping it below what that target's been. So in the same situation here, we're not going to we'll do everything in our power to not let that interest or that tax rate go above what we've projected to the taxpayers. But as it goes to the splitting them up, that, that's totally a decision on y'all's part. And worst case scenario, what, what are we, on a $100,000 house, where is it estimated about an $8 a month increase, I believe? Is what oh, I, I mean, once again, it, it's kind of moved right. and we're going from 15 and a half to 16. So yeah, I'd say about $8. I mean, I'm, I didn't even do the right, calculation, right. but yeah, standing here, because generally one mil is, is yeah, about 10 bucks. Okay. So you guys can have the discussion on the, or you, you want to hear from citizens. Yeah, I'd love to hear from citizens. Uh, yes, uh, Lance Maxwell, are you here? Hi, good evening, Council Mayor uh, Lance Maxwell, 1812 Northeast First. Uh, I don't think there's any um, misunderstanding of the fact that the lack of an underpass at 4th Street is not only a traffic concern, but a public safety concern. Um, while I do uh, agree with all the rest of the projects that are being placed forth with this uh, particular uh, general obligation bond issue, I think the most Im uh, important from a from a safety standpoint within this city is is the underpass. Uh, while we are building an overpass at 34th for traffic relief of 19th, I think in many cases having an underpass at 4th will be similar in scope as far as reducing traffic on 19th. I say this as Saturday night. Uh, you know, had an issue with a stop train on 4th. I think we're all well aware of that. Um, made a detour down to a tower drive over to 19th, and those traffic signals are not equipped to handle that kind of traffic coming off of 4th Street. 
So uh, with that being said, obviously you increase quite a bit of traffic on, on Tower or Broadway, wherever you're at, to avoid that train. That's a big point. The, the one other thing I'd like to say that if we're going to look at spending these kind of funds for street improvements, we really need to pay attention to the beautification aspect of how we're doing this. Um, I certainly appreciate the sidewalks that have been put in along 4th Street. That's something that uh, I had been lobbying hard for. Um, but we needed to really take a good look at how we're doing that. Because as a friend of mine stated earlier, there is a, such a thing as a bad sidewalk. And when you've got kids walking directly adjacent to a state highway, where your traffic is going 40, 45 miles an hour without some sort of protective barrier, whether it's a median or whatever else, um, you're going to have issues. So um, personally, you know, trees, sidewalks, bike lanes, all these things that are going to go into increasing the property value to offset uh, what might be a small tax increase on our property. I think we all need to take a look at that going forward. So with that being said, I would like to voice my um, being in favor of this particular uh, proposal. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brooks. Brooks, when, uh, as we go forward, you said we'd have some town hall meetings. Will there be opportunities for people to come and see a visual of what those 10 foot sidewalks will look like and with the trees being planted? The yes, we'll get, we'll, get, we'll get some things. Some renderings. Or some renderings so, right. so people can see. Yes. Very good. I don't, why did we do the town hall meetings prior to presenting I think this there was a, a date deadline. <clears throat> that was what I was told to get it on the ballot. Yeah. The way they do the ballots anymore, it takes forever to get something on, even if you get it on. So that was why we did this this way, as far as I know. The only comment would be... Uh, We're doing it backwards. I yeah, agree. We, I yeah. agree. Obviously, it's, it's a lot of money. Uh, um, as I looked at the, the projects, I liked all of them. They're all needed. Uh, but Molly... You know, I got an email about a month ago that was talking about this. And so, as a member of the council, I want to, to have more input into the big ticket items that we're going to do, especially if we're going to be going to the, you know, to the voters and asking them to support, support uh, what it is that we hear them saying to us or what we feel like the city needs. Um, you know, I look in the, you know, the more public schools did a $200 plus million dollar bond issue. The more normal technology center did a $60 million bond issue. We did one for the bridge. And so I know it's just $8 a month here and there, but it all, it it adds, all up. adds up. And, uh, you know, speaking for myself, I've taken a significant pay decrease this, this past year due to a, a job change. And, and those are things that I want to be able to consider and uh, think out. Um, I, I like the underpass, uh, but I would agree that, you know, that being 90% of the projects, maybe it, there could have been another way we could have split it up or just put on one of those streets. And I'm sure there's a strategy behind all of this. And uh, I just feel like we're rushing it. And I know we are anxious to get these things done. Uh, but for me to, to be able to speak to the voters that are in four or those that are opposed, I need to feel confident that, uh, that I have been able to get all the information that I need and had, have had input into to moving forward with this. So I, I am just hesitant to, to vote in favor of this the way that it is. It's, I don't know, it's one of the biggest bond projects that we've probably ever done. I guess the, uh, the uh, sewer treatment plant, that was a $50 million project, but you know, it's just, it's a lot, and I think the city of Moore has, have, has a lot of confidence with its uh, residents, its citizens, and, and I would hate to see us uh, miss that. Um, I don't know, there's just a lot happening. You know, there's still layoffs that are going on throughout the region, and I'm just, I want to have confidence, and I do have confidence in our city manager and our city staff, but I just, just am not sure how we vote on this tonight. Well, it just depends on what kind of city you want. You want to live in a city where you drive through and all you could smell is the sewer? I mean, that's what we fixed last. I don't. I don't want to have to sit in another light, uh, down, or train, excuse me, for another 35 minutes or, you know, whatever, wasting my time. 
And if somebody gets hurt, you know, what are you going to do? Right. We can fix that. So, and this is the way you do it, unfortunately. And I pushed for the quiet zones to be on there. I've gotten quite a few calls about that. I love that. Some of my positive feedback. Some of my constituents even call out and listen to the train at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, um, I, I, you know, I pushed. I think it's important to, to have that on there. I love that. That's good as well. That's good. We don't have people signed up to vote. I don't know if they knew the process, but I think there's a lot of people that would like to Yeah, there's, speak. No, there's no one else signed up. Would anyone like to speak? Come on up. Since we're the government, we don't have a paper trail. If you would, state your name and address for the record, please. Brad Morse, 1013 Desiree Place. Um, thank you, Mr. Lewis, for saying that uh, we need this underpass. Um, I think it's very, very needed. Um, and what I, in addition to that, what I would say is we spend too much time waiting on the railroad to govern our city. It really needs to stop. It tells us when we can pass through our streets, what time we can put our kids down to bed. It's, it needs to stop. They can't have that kind of control over our city. In addition to that, I would say if we're going to talk about street projects, are we going to put these things out to paving contractors to bid on, or are we just going to give it to Silver Star? I know that's not a popular thing. They're hearing more, but there's lots of paving contractors out there. And if we're going to spend this kind of money, let's not just hand it over to one one crew well i agree with you the only thing is on silver stars construction we actually bid that out as a contract at the first of the year they're not only our our uh, contractor for street repair and maintenance but they're also for ice removal and snow removal and if you have noticed, you can tell where more starts in oklahoma city starts and when it snows because you can't get to oklahoma city from here but ours are always cleaned off if I could add to that, Brad, um, I know that I have people who call in Rock Creek, really close to your house, and um, there was a giant pothole not too long ago, and I called Stan, and within the same day, Silver Star was out there. So I know there's a lot of great paving companies, and we do contract it out every year to make sure we're still getting a great deal. They are very, very responsive to the needs of our city. So um, just to kind of give you a heads up on how quickly they respond to projects. And we, we do have three other city contractors on that list. Rudy Construction is the one that comes to mind for fixing the streets. I mean, if you want a street project to last two years, we call Rudy. We want it done in six weeks, we call Silver Star. Well, I, I can agree with that. Um, I'm not in the concrete business, so I don't have a dog <laughs> in that hunt. Um, I really don't. But, but we, try to, we try to get it you know, out there in the community where we get the best value for our money so and this underpass doing. though is that going to be a project that we send out for that'll be out for bid, out for bid. big yeah. bid and yeah. not yeah. just given over yeah. nope. they, they probably okay. wouldn't be in the position to actually build that anyway that's pretty much a uh, very specific much. job kind of like the the overpass on i-35 you have to be a federal contractor the state can't even go out and repair, repair a bridge on I-35 without federal permission. So it's very specific, and we're basically out of that loop once it's bid out. So that'll be an ODOT project, unfortunately. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, I'm Chris Fox, 1025 Southeast 12th Street. and. Um, Thanks so much for having a discussion um, that's, you know, inclusive and, and real about, you know, spending $45 million. Um, but I do want to uh, certainly let all of you know, as I've let my, uh, my award counselors know, I'm in favor of the um, underpass project. And I certainly respect Councilman, Ham, Councilman Ham's opinion and, and, um, and his thoughts. I think that's worthy of, of weighing um, how much it does increase 
uh, our taxes. I'm glad to hear so much discussion about that tonight. So my, my hat is off to you for that. I really appreciate it. I'm also in favor of the street projects. Um, that for me uh, maybe is a little bit more of a, of a passion thing. Um, I love that we've added sidewalks. I love that we're talking trees. I want to hear more about bike lanes. Um, potentially just some future proofing when it comes to autonomous vehicles that are headed um, you know, our way as a city. Here's, here's the, the crux of it. Um, I have a young family and uh, you know, our school is a, is a great school and I want my kids to, to go to more schools, to graduate from more schools. Um, but in the, in the world and the culture that we have in, in, this, uh, in our space in this century, I can go anywhere and work and do anything from anywhere. And, and many, many, many of, of, of the people my age can do that same thing. And so when our kids are out of school, the, the question is what will keep us in more? Um, will our city be future proof? Will it be, you know, at least an effort to uh, make sure that, um, you know, when we want to ride our bikes and uh, when biking becomes more, public transit becomes more, or autonomous vehicles become more, are, are we making steps? I'm not saying we have to solve all the problems, but are we making steps to make sure that we will be a city that people consider um, staying in when, when they're ready to move on because they can go anywhere and do anything from anywhere at this point. Um, so that's just something I would like you guys to consider is um, how can we make sure that, that when we redo Eastern and we redo uh, you know, um, 4th Street that we can really make sure that we're amplifying uh, multimodal transit, that we can let people get around easily. I know traffic is a big problem for our city, but as we increase ways other people can get around from a bike to foot to public transit maybe someday uh, we alleviate traffic in those ways as well instead of just adding more lanes or uh, different street lights so thanks for considering that and um, I very much look forward to voting in favor of, of a bond issue like this and, and, and adding my voice when the time comes too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> And Bricks, just real quick for clarification, the 10 foot sidewalk will, um, the idea behind that is that there will be enough space for pedestrian and biking. Yes. Just for everyone I hear. Okay. My name is Robert Sean. I live at 225 Southeast 4th. I'm the only occupied house in a mile. Everything else is business or empty. I'm the one that sits on your porch, on my porch, watching the traffic watching you make your U-turns, going down Turner. A couple of weeks ago, a uh, survey went out on your roads. And lo and behold, 4th Street still gets the most traffic, even with the railroad. Now, I know they have rules. I'll sit and listen to the engine pop up, make its bump. It's done its job for another 30 minutes. It does not have to move. I laud you for wanting this broken apart. If this overpass is going to go, it needs to be standalone. You start tacking on and tacking on, and I'd even vote no. I also live in Old Town. We've got meetings going on at Celebration Station now. New sidewalks, new whatever. Let us know what you want. None of this, I assume, is on this bond issue. That's already funded, right? Yeah, we funded A couple that. of sidewalks, maybe. But you're going to, I mean, you start adding on and adding on. If you want the overpass to go, fine. People have tried to buy me out for years. I don't care. The last one I told him, I said, I'll die, my, my kids will sell to you. But I won't. When my house was built, it was a cow pasture across the street. I've lost half of my front yard to 4th Street over the years. I don't really care at this point except get the overpass done. We can talk about it. Is the state and is the federal government going to kick in on this? It should be a three-way deal because that is a state highway. Not if we're going to pay for it. Someone, you might check on that. They have got to do something. We, we looked into grants and all that. And well, I know. The, I, I remember I mean, the grant, Joe. That was a joke. Yeah. I remember well, that. I mean, it, look at what's going on in our state. I mean, Are they, the I mean, plans the same plans that were submitted two years ago? Yes. Yeah, I think so. So by the time it gets through, that retaining wall is going to be 10 foot from my house. 
which I don't care. My sewer line now is under 4th Street because it did not get moved when it went to four lane. My gas line will be under the sidewalk. Again, the retaining wall will be across my driveway. <coughs> I don't care. But the flow of traffic, it, that matters, especially when you guys have already done your surveys on streets and it's still one of the busiest streets and more. But I do like the idea of breaking it apart because all I can see is adding something else. Keep adding on because the bulk deal will pass and then we'll have to think about the rest of it. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, come on up. Just, just to clarify, those are all going to be separate propositions. So if citizens feel like you do on that and vote down the street sweepers, then they don't, won't be rolled in. We could actually pass the underpass without, and without doing the street sweepers and without doing, um, I, I don't remember what the other one you mentioned the was. Phone the, the phone they system, use the yes. Streets, if I could just clarify, they use the street sweepers, one, when they're done with the uh, debris from yeah. the snow, yeah. with all the salt and sand, we sweep that up. Anything that where they have a building going in the development where the mud runs over the road into the road, we use that to clean up the roads with to keep it off the cars. We do a lot of that with the street sweeper. And it also helps keep our drainage systems clear. Yes. Yeah, we we use them now, and it would be something that we'd also like. She said it keeps the drainage areas clean and yeah. keeps them from getting clogged up because people we, in Mormon we don't have them drink currently, it. but they wear out yeah. and they need to yeah, be replaced. Okay. So that kind of is pretty bad like how do we know how bad this stuff is i don't want to pay for you can stuff. go look at it i mean is it is it it's the, pretty bad i don't know <laughs> i wish that there was a way i mean i think what mark Young said was really good you know about like separating the issues and stuff but well they will be separated out there will be five different issues you can vote on you don't have to vote yes on any of them only the ones you want okay. so right, and if you and don't want any of them or you do want them all also, I was wondering, like, with the design plans, because um, not all intersections are created equal. So, like, how can I voice my input on, like, creating accessible, like, handicap accessible intersections and stuff for if we are going to do, like, the underpass and stuff? How do I make <coughs> input? Like, who do I talk to before it actually goes into place? We're, we're sitting here and well, I think they and there'll be some town hall meetings yes. and and I would assume everything will be accessible on the okay. new roads yes, that we do yes, but yes. but there will be they some town hall to meetings too they have yeah. they'll have to be accessible well like, even some of the handicap accessible like the ramp on like by k2 main and eastern and more um, the ramp that's by k2 on that side it's I have to 
to, you push the button and then you have to like roll down and around and back over to the ramp to actually cross the street. Um, which is okay for me because I'm in a power wheelchair, but if I was with a walker or with a manual wheelchair, even in my power chair, it takes off precious seconds just rolling around. And so it technically is handicap accessible, but it's not handicap friendly. Does that can, make sense? Can you make us a list of those places that you know about? Okay. And we'll see if we can get them fixed. Well, and, and I don't want to try to fix the stuff we have now. Like, I don't want to add more oh, no. stuff. Which you, you want to make sure the new stuff is. Yeah, we, we yeah. want it to be accessible for everyone here. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Handicap like or not. Those intersections are okay and everything, but, you know, before we invest all this money sure. into something, I just want it to be as perfect as possible. Well, this, this goes back to Mark. We're not completely broke as a city. We still have money to do operations <coughs> and different things like you're talking about. We can fix those without adding those to the bond issue. So there are a lot of things that we can do already okay. and we want to do. These are just the extra things. These are, these are special stuff. I mean, it's not, this, there's not a single thing on there that we couldn't live without. It just makes it better if we want to make it better. Yeah. So it just depends on what kind of city you want to live in. spots I need to tell you guys about, but um, most of them are okay. It's just, you know, really inconvenient if you're sure. using a walker or a manual chair. That's a lot of strength and Well, we need, to, we need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Thank, thank you, you, Becky. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Hi, Chris Fleming, 236 Asher Court. And thank you all for this discussion and for considering these items and, and being frank about your opinions in, in the open setting. And a couple of things I, I want to speak of. Um, part of my day job with a couple of business partners and, and myself has, has been redeveloping the Midtown area of Oklahoma City. And a few things that are, are touched on tonight are things that we have um, encountered there that we work with Oklahoma City to, to improve. And one of those is the quiet zone issue with the train horns and the improvements that come with that instead of just the train horns being quiet and the, and the quality of life that that brings and being able to put your kid to bed because you know, you know when the, the horn's not going to blow. Um, the, the improvements that are made to those crossings prevent people from doing the good old switch, you know, I'm going to beat the train before it gets to the track and go through the gates and, and I think that's a big important thing. And then again the quality of life and you know trying to have a conversation outside I mean we just heard the train whistle come by you know five minutes ago so you know those type of things and then down the road um, potential economic development impact along the tracks and, and near the track so you think of, of redevelopment as, as it continues in old town or in places near the tracks it's something that the quiet zone will enable um, such things to happen and then additionally um, when we talk about streets I'm, I'm going to challenge you guys and city staff, and I did the same thing in Oklahoma City. Um, we don't want streets, we want great streets. <coughs> and we're paying for the streets, we're all paying for the streets, and we want them to be great, we want them to be complete, we want them to be, to be accessible for everyone. And so, as engineers are looking at this, it, it needs to be looked at from a complete perspective of, of everybody who's using the transportation system, not just cars. And so, what, what you know, there's buzzwords out there, there's walkability, there's road diets, there's complete streets, there's, you know, there's just name them. There's several, of, you know, different variations out there. But at the end of the day, it really emphasizes pedestrians, automobiles, bicycles, um, whether or not you're, you're able-bodied or, or wheelchair-bound. And I think that one thing that that yeah we're going to put a 10-foot sidewalks and we're going to put trees but that doesn't make a great street and that doesn't make a walkable street and so what i would what i would ask you guys and challenge you guys to do and I'll, i can provide examples of great streets from around the world that we've that we've looked at um, but it's narrow lanes i mean there's nothing better than narrow lanes to improve safety of streets 
and there's nothing better than narrow lanes to improve safety of sidewalks because it forces people to go slower and forces people to be more mindful of what's going on around them. So as we and as you all look forward to those projects, I challenge you to build great streets, not just streets. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Anybody else? <coughs> Jared Williams, 1056 Northwest 28th Street. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say to y'all. Uh, <clears throat> I support every part, uh, every measure in uh, this bond elective. And since I live on Northwest 28th Street, the vast majority of it's not going to affect my daily life. But I still support anyways. Assuming there's no private jets as part of the bond, there's no, there's no luxury mansions or anything. Uh, Anytime that you need me to spend more money in order to help make this city better for my eventual kids and grandkids, I'm down for it. As far as splitting up the street projects into multiple issues versus a single issue, <clears throat> I went to school for political science, which I'm not going to pretend that makes me an expert. It made me an expert to move back in with my parents, mostly. Uh, <laughs> but... <clears throat> I know plenty of people that even though if you ask them about very specific issues, they would agree to everything, but if they get 12 things that the city asks for them on a ballot, they don't want to say yes to everything. They don't want the city to assume that they can get whatever they want, so they'll mix it up and be like, okay, well, I'll say no on these things. Even though I like those things, I'll, I'll do no on those things. That way they don't get everything. So I would recommend keeping it together, but ultimately that's y'all's decision. And thank you all for leading the city. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. One last person. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to move on. Do we have a motion on this item? I'll make a motion to approve. All right, thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion from the council? I, just the only comment that I would have would be I believe the underpass could be a standalone uh, issue itself. Um, and just had a lot, a lot of great discussion and heard from some good people tonight and would like to have heard from even more of our citizens uh, before we got to this point. Okay, before we take a vote, I'm going to ask, ask you something on this. Has this been approved by the AG, the wording on this? We, they don't approve it ahead of time. Do we have time to take it to them to, or do we have know. time to redo it, to, to split that up? Well, or what I, I, I think we have to do is, uh, because our agenda, which... I apologize it's so long that you had to read, but it's it's set for basically five issues right now, five different propositions. Okay. And so I think if we want to split it up, we'd have to have a special meeting. Which and would cause we a have special to, election. And and because uh, just for the council's information, I know I know Brooks knows this and Glenn probably knows this. The way our election statutes are set up right now, there's only three other times the rest of this year we can have an election. Right now we're shooting for June 26th. The next available one is August 28th, and the final one is November 6th. So as you guys know, that's primary, runoff, and general election. We have to give 75 days notice. When is that published? When are those dates made known? Is it just in January they set the dates? Well, the election, board, yeah, the election board sets advance. them based on uh, the days that the, that the legislature outlines. So we've known about those dates for a right, while as right, mildly. And right. so we're, we're kind of put ourselves in this but, do or die. We have to do it now or if we don't. And, I, you know, you're, well, you're, you don't want the underpass. No, I, I do, but I just think that it could be a standalone. And so we're in a, in a position that is just I don't, I don't like. I think I kind of share Councilman Ham's frustration because we got a $40 million topic and only 23 of that goes to the underpass. Is that correct? It's 27. 27? 27. Okay, so the rest of that is street projects. And I think what we're saying is in the future we need at least yes. two more. We need a not, buffer zone of time. In no, the not the rest of it, street projects. Like there's, other, there's, other, there's, other, there's the quiet zone and all that too. That's right, right. And I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. Me personally, I'm for all these things, but I think that um, in the future we need a time buffer zone for situations like this. Um, you know, it sounds seems like we just did this. You know, it's either we do it now or in August. 
So in the future, we need a little more of a heads up. The point I want to make is I'm happy to break it up into six propositions if that's what the council wants, but I almost think we have to have a special meeting to rephrase the agenda item because it won't coincide with what we're going to do if we break it up into six propositions. Right now, the way it's worded, it just addresses five. And because we have to give 75 day notice for all three of these elections that are left, our, our cutoff date, we have to file by April 11th. And so we'd have to have another special meeting between now and the 11th if y'all want to break it up. And so what I'm, would what would be the next time we would vote, general vote? Uh, the, the available city. dates are June 26th, which is what we're shooting for, then August 28th or November 6th. November 6th is the general election. Right. I mean, I would prefer to do it in June. I mean, do you guys want to have a special meeting to break that up to I two questions? Okay. The $45 million one? I mean, what do you guys want to do? We're going to call for the vote. Like call she for asked the vote. for a call for the vote. Would you call for the vote? We have a motion and a second for the agenda item as it And if it fails, then we'll go, we'll go from there. Okay. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. <coughs> Adam Webb? No. Mark Ham? No. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item passes. Okay, so we'll just keep it as it is. Thank you. All right, thank you. Item number four is consider authorizing the execution of election proclamation and notice pertaining to the proposed general obligation bond issue. Mayor and Council, this is just a companion item for agenda item 3.1. Put it on the election. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please, if there's no other discussion from the council? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? No. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number five is consider adoption of employment agreements with Chris Gander of BOK Financial Securities Incorporated as financial advisor and Terry L. Hawkins as Phillips Murrah PC as bond counsel in regards to the proposed general obligation bond issue. Mayor and Council, just a companion item. Obviously, these gentlemen are the ones that have advised us throughout this process, and so this just formalizes their agreement as we go through the uh, everything else. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion from the council? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number six is consider a request for a variance to Part 5, Chapter 2, Article B, Section 5 229, re relocation of used residential buildings to allow the residential structure at 306 South Howard to be relocated to a vacant lot at 111 North Classen. Application by Greg Rushing. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, Mr. Rushing approached the city. Um, uh, several weeks ago about the possibility of relocating the existing residential home at 306 South Howard to a vacant lot at, at 111 North Classen. Uh, Mr. Rushing had rezoned his property um, some time ago to C3. He's now considering uh, redeveloping that property into a commercial use, uh, but he does have a residential uh, renter in the house who he would like to keep. Uh, and this happens to be a, a very perfect solution um, in his mind, and I think that I would tend to agree, as saving an, an older home that is still in decent shape um, and definitely has a renter in it, uh, and relocating it to an area that has very <coughs> similar uh, residential homes already there. Uh, so um, the request is to relocate the building. Uh, I have provided with you, for you on page 74 of your agenda packet um, a photo of the, the home in question on Howard and then the immediately surrounding neighbors um, at 111 North Classen. Uh, you can see that the architectural uh, style and the construction materials are similar in nature. 
Um, and also I have provided you a uh, summary table, I suppose, on page 73. Um, I got this uh, information from the county website and it kind of shows you how the um, square footage and the age of the home would fit in with the other surrounding neighbors. Um, we did send out a notice of this request to the immediate neighbors uh, of the lot, the vacant lot at 111 North Classen, um, and we did not receive any phone calls, although someone may be here today. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thanks. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this issue? It's opposed to it or in favor of it? Okay. Do we have a motion? I make a motion we approve. Okay. Is that is that city's recommendation to approve? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Thank you for the motion. Second. second. Okay. Thank you for the second. Both of you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion from council? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Mark Ham? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number seven is consider renewal of DB compensation software license and support agreement with DB squared effective April 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2019. Mayor and trustees. In 2016, the city contracted with the Johansson Group for a classification and compensation study, which was approved and implemented by the council in July of 2016. Part of that implementation included DB compensation software, which is meant to assist the Human Resources Department with writing new job descriptions when necessary in a format that allows for consistency across our classification system. The software licensed through DB Squared was a one-time purchase. The agreement before you today covers the annual technical support fee, which includes software upgrades released during the term of the annual agreement, basic technical support, and distance training of new city HR employees. At this time, the software does continue to assist us with writing uniform job descriptions, and we are able to use the technical support provided. Staff recommends approval of the agreement. I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Can you expand on market update fee? Oh, on the, sorry, I've got to go and look. The market updates we're not using right now, but what it would do is um, DB Compensation would go out and do a market survey for us, and then they would bring that information back get into the software so, so would you have the that. opportunity to, to decide whether we engage in that or not yes okay okay do we have a motion motion to approve all right thank you second we have a, a motion <laughs> thank you we have a motion and a second in the other comments from council if not would you call for the vote please Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number eight is discuss and consider approval of a joint project with the City of Oklahoma City for reconstruction of Southwest 34th Street between Santa Fe, South, yeah, Southwest 34th Street between Santa Fe and Western in the amount of $56,250. Mayor and Council, this is the mile between Santa Fe and Western on our Southwest 34th, Oklahoma City's 164th. Within that mile, we own, we own the northeast quarter of that, which is a fourth of the project. This project will be reconstructed with uh, the use of county crews, and there will be a contractor involved. but there should be significant cost savings. So the $58,000 in the change is a fourth of the total cost of the project. I don't know how often you've driven that mile of roadway, but the drainage is poor and the driving surface is worn out. And it actually does serve that subdivision. We actually have Oak Ridge, the, uh, one of the entries stub out 234th Street there west of Santa Fe. What this level of construction is this? Is this a full resurface? Is what, what be, are they going to do? 
It'll be, they'll be uh, cleaning bar ditches, grading the drain, there'll be uh, base stabilization, and then they'll be resurfacing. Okay. How did we get a sweetheart deal like this where we only pay a fourth for half the road? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we own. Oh, okay, that's all we own. Yeah. Actually, we entered into an interlocal agreement with Oklahoma City, this body approved several months ago, and when we resurfaced 19th Street between Sunny Lane and Eastern, we wanted to redo that intersection at uh, Sunny Lane. However, the agreement wasn't in place. We felt like it's beneficial to both communities to have the interlocal agreement. And when things like this come up, then still comes in front of this body, but still yet it makes it much easier to do. This is this is a great deal. I want to say thank you to the county I'm, commissioners. This is I'm glad we're doing this. I've gotten calls about this stretch yeah. of road, so they'll this be happy to hear that we're getting this fixed. <laughs> yeah, this will be great. Thank you. Thanks. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, we have a motion and a, and a second. Any other discussion on this item? No. Who's call for the vote, please? Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Daniel McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes, item carries. Item number nine is consider awarding bid number 1718-10, construction services for demolition for 3401 South Service Road and 30, oh, excuse me, 302 Southwest 34th Street to K&M Wrecking Company in the amount of 49000 $925 is the lowest and most responsible bidder and approved contract for the same. And Mayor and Council, okay. this is for the uh, truck and trailer that's located <coughs> there on the southwest corner of uh, the Southwest Service Road there in 34th Street. That has to be demoed and taken down to the for the overpass construction can begin. We solicited bids and we actually had a good turnout at the pre-bid and we received numerous bids on this project, but we'd recommend K&M, they were the low bidder and we've had past experience with them and they do quality work. Now, was this part of the bond issue? Yes. Okay, so the money's already approved for it. All right, do we have a motion? Motion to approve. All right, thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion by council? Would you call for the vote, please? Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 10 is consider awarding RFP number 1718-08 playground equipment for Apple Valley Park to play by design, or excuse me, play by design in the amount of 125000 Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, uh, staff solicited proposals for a new playground at Apple Valley Park. We received uh, proposals from eight different companies. As we do with all of our playgrounds, the last, uh, well, really since the 2012 um, uh, quarter cent park sales tax, we assign a theme um, to each of our new playgrounds. The theme for this one is a castle theme, which you should, in your packet, have a, uh, a rendering of it. Uh, we had a committee made up of uh, parks board volunteers and uh, city staff. They reviewed the proposals. Uh, staff um, uh, really like and the, the the committee and staff really like the one submitted by play by design uh, in the amount of $125,000 which is the budget for that uh, playground uh, I would just mention this is a little bit different type of a look and a style for our playgrounds uh, you're very familiar with the, the ones that we've done in the past where there's bars and the typical looking playground this is a little bit different look so we're excited about this uh, it's manufactured uh, in the United States. It's a cast concrete type material uh, that will be on um, a foundation. Uh, so it should be a great addition to our park system and have a really cool and uh, nice look to it. Uh, this is a budgeted item. It's part of the 2016 round of uh, quarter cent sales tax. Uh, so we'd recommend approval. Staff would recommend approval and I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. How far is this gonna be from the splash pad we did over there? Um, Mayor, it's probably as the crow flies, um, 75 to 100 feet. It, oh, it will be in the spot close. where the okay. existing Same spot. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. I just appreciate you guys and all your work you always do to make our parks yeah. unique and look great. We get so much positive feedback from that. That thing is Thank used you, all the time. And uh, appreciate the uh, community input that you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a motion? 
A motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Louis Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Thank, Thank you. Todd, while you're standing up there, how's uh, Fairmore, Fairview? Fairmore? How's that park? Is it open? Is it done? It, it is open. It is done. Uh, the last thing that we did was uh, we added a fountain in the pond, uh, and that was installed probably within the last month or so. So it is open. I drove by several times over the weekend. There's a lot of traffic. Okay. So it's been very well received. Yeah. Thank you, Todd. It looks great. Looks Thank great. You, Todd. That's good. At this time, we'll recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item number 11 is the consent docket. Item A, receive and approve the minutes of the regular more public works authority meeting held March 19, 2018. Item B, approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2017-2018 in the amount of $819,988.03. Move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. If we have a motion and a second, would you call for the vote, please? Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 12 is consider awarding bid number 1718-11, purchase of one or, or more high compaction 32 cubic yard automated side loader packer bodies to Bridgeport Manufacturing in the amount of $144,535.37 as the lowest and best bidder and approved contract for same. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we went out for bid for this uh, packer body. It's the bodies that we use on our sanitation our route trucks, our residential route trucks. Um, Bridgeport come in as the lowest and best bidder and staff recommends the approval. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. That's not for the truck, that's just for the loader, right? That's just for the packer yeah, people, body. People the truck's me, about the same price. I had this conversation today and they said, man, that's a lot of money for a, for a truck. And it's like, that's not even the truck, that's just the That's just unit. the packer right. body. Yeah, okay. the truck is on state contract, so we'll purchase it off and once it's built, It'll be sent to Bridgeport for okay. the body of the episode. So the 144,000 is for one? Yes. Okay. Just, for one. Yeah. Just yeah. making sure. Yeah. It's worded one or more. Yeah, they're, they're right at it. Yeah, they're yeah, right at it. Wait, you see the price of a fire truck. <laughs> oh, no. I, yeah. right I wasn't at surprised at the price. I was just yeah. curious. So. Yeah, it, that's a lot. Yeah, they're right I think at 290 something thousand dollars. So. Yeah. Move to approve. All right. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion from council? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll recess the Moore Public Works Authority meeting and convene the Moore Risk Management meeting. Item number 13 is the consent docket. Item A, accept the minutes of the regular Moore Risk Management meeting held March 19, 2018. Item B, approved payment of uh, workers' compensation settlement in the amount of $15,100.25 for CBR claim number 2050000546 to Matthew Melton and authorized placement on the Advalorum tax roll. Item C, approve the, and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2017-2018 in the amount of $119,390.20. Move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Oh, this is a consent docket. Never mind. Would you call for the vote, please? Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. At this time, we will recess the more risk management meeting and reconvene the city council meeting. Item number 14 is new business. Item A is citizens forum for items not on the agenda. We don't have anyone signed up on anything. Would anybody like to speak on anything? That's a wide open question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item B is items from the city council or trustees. Todd, I want to thank you and your team for putting on such a good uh, Easter egg hunt extravaganza. My niece and nephew are out there and lots of kiddos and smiling faces. It was a good time. 
I think it's good that we can uh, come together and have civil discussion and uh, even disagree. And uh, it's not personal. We're all friends and enjoy working with each and every one of you. So thanks, everybody, for your work and your willingness to serve for 100 bucks a month. <laughs> and, and, we are, and I appreciate the citizens that showed up tonight to get yeah, us there so as well. Yeah, yeah it was glad you guys showed up. Yeah, it makes I'll our job easier. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> and we did have fun at her job, so appreciate that. Okay, any items from the trust manager or city manager? Yeah, just a couple of things just to touch on the Easter egg hunt. I was there, great event, over 2,700 kids. So, wow. Uh, very, very well attended, and uh, the you know, the whole place was just covered with Easter eggs and they were all gone in about three minutes. So it's uh, <laughs> amazing how fast that can happen. And then I believe there's uh, about, there's 50 people signed up for the new summer camp program that uh, we've got. So that, that's off to a good start. It's all gone. All right. Well, congratulations, everybody, and more leadership. I guess you've all passed. Uh, Bricks didn't tell me anybody failed, so I guess that's a good thing. So with that, item 15 is adjournment. So moved. All right. So again, thank you, folks. In honor of TC. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes. Thank you for coming. Oh, by the way.